What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shots React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us, and, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100k. And we cannot get there without you guys. All right, join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. I just got a package from my grandma in Belgium. She sent me one at the beginning of December for as long as I can remember to celebrate St. Nicholas Day. That's when their traditional version of Santa Claus, Santa Claus, comes to visit kids and yeah, we'll reward the good Santa ones Claus. and punish the bad ones. And there's always lots of good stuff in here. There are Belgian waffles, there are speculos cookies, chocolate, there's lots of chocolate. And then sometimes there's this. This is Warta Piet, and that's Dutch for Black Piet, and he's St. Nicholas's traditional assistant. He's the guy who carries all the presents around and punishes all the bad kids. You can kind of think of him like one of Santa's elves, except he is a blackface caricature. Black Piet has paint- Okay, so this video came about after we reacted to some culture shocks from an American living in the Netherlands, I believe, and so of course we were hearing it from his point of view um so we were you know we felt the same kind of way like no how dare y'all you know but in the comment section of that video you guys have you know shared your thoughts about it and shared that it's not supposed to be a black face character it's supposed to be um him going in the chimney and having smoke on his face but when you know, when you see things like this and his whole body is covered, it does come off as it being blackface. But you guys sent this video in, so... I mean, we did raise questions, too, so you guys did... I feel like it's going to help us understand a lot you know. more. We're going to go deep into it because it's going to be the conversation. Yeah. And in that video, you also mentioned that a lot of these things that they were talking about, you wasn't too familiar with. Yeah. You know, so y'all was like, this is his his angle on things but you guys wasn't clear on like why was he thinking that you know right but you know in america this was how people made their money by making fun of us so and he wasn't even black he was i, I wonder i, I, want, I wonder, wonder if that um orange part tastes like chocolate too oh god <laughs> yeah i wonder because if it's all just chocolate i can do that but if it's different flavor chocolate then i can definitely do that <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah, all so right. let's see what this is all about. Let's talk about it. Tid black skin and big gold hoop earrings and oversized red lips, and he wears colorful Renaissance era clothing. Throughout Belgium and the Netherlands, people dress up as Black Pete around St. Nicholas Day. This is what that looked like in 1930 in a small town north of Amsterdam, and in 1970 at a local gym, and in 2006 at an elementary school, and in 2014 at a parade. I grew up with this tradition in Belgium. People dressed up as Black Pete and St. Nicholas would come visit my school and take pictures and pass out candy. But Black Pete is a racist caricature. It's a remnant of the Netherlands' colonial past. And this tradition is now at the center of a heated political debate. It's a bit disturbing to realize that you have enjoyed as a child something that now turns out to be problematic. That's disturbing. And so they said, don't mess with my memories. Those in the Netherlands who defend Black Pete argue that it can't be changed because it's a tradition that's been around forever. The prime minister even made this argument when he was asked about it at a nuclear security summit in 2014. Because what I said is that Black Pete is black and I cannot change that. And uh, because the name it's is Black Pete. almost like you guys was handed something without, their, without the manual. Mm. Almost like read this to see what is what where it comes from, or here's a history behind it. It was more so like here's a gift. We've always been doing it. It's our tradition. Yeah, that's just let's just continue. Let's pass yeah. it on and spread it wide, and people start to do it without really knowing what they're doing, and that's understandable. Mm. I've seen people do things and they were not unfamiliar with the with the consequences behind it. All right, yeah. that's kind of how it goes. But go ahead, babe. No, that's it. Okay, but. That is the same as like with some statues that we had a problem with mm -hmm. in recent years, the Confederate soldier statues and how one by one our country has started to take them down because it no longer fits the time that we're in. So maybe that is what's going on. It no mm -hmm. longer fits the time. But again, we're looking at it through an American lens. Mm. He is from Belgium. I don't know if he lives in, uh, I don't know where he lives now. So... 
But the stereotype of the character and the black face was big here. You know, people had a whole industry going, making money, <laughs> wealth. Yeah, off big of, facts. Yeah. Off of making fun of black people. So Yeah, this is a little suckish because you guys are like, I, I'm hearing in the video that a lot of, you know, they're not familiar with why it was an issue to other people. Mm -hmm. And for you guys, it's a memory and it's an enjoyment that right. you had along, you know, the whole uh, community. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it makes sense to be like, but why would we have to change? Right. But what's interesting is in the video that we reacted to with the culture shocks and this topic came up, there we asked, what did the black Dutch people think? And there were either there were even one person under the comments who said, I don't see a problem with it, and they were black. So that's when it becomes interesting because who... Because now there's been changes to it. So who were the people who spearheaded that movement to make changes. Like, why did it become to, to a problem? Make it a, yeah, to make a problem. Yeah, right. yeah, I got you, I got you. Yeah. Was it people who are from there, or was it people who move there? Or did it leak out in media? Because mm. a lot of times stuff don't that, hit media. Yeah. And when, once culture. it hit media, people be like, whoa, y'all doing that over there? Right, we ain't, we ain't going to tolerate Nah, I ain't flying, <laughs> yeah. bro, now, nah, because we don't accept that. Yeah. That would be very you know, different for us to have to accept that in a parade. It's yeah. walk, like, we wouldn't want that. You know yeah, what I'm like saying? like if so, we were tourists and we saw that, it was like, hold up. For instance, <laughs> we know that in another continent, colored is a, is a used word that is very popular in yeah, a yeah. positive way. In I a can positive say. way. But yeah. if we was to hear it in our terminology, we would not accept it that way. You our know? elders would slap us silly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but well, don't you dare. <laughs> you know? Here, so. chewing this bar of soap. <laughs> This is a uh, old children's tradition, Sinterklaas and Zwarte Piet, Black Piet, uh, and it is not Green Piet or Brown Piet, it is Black Piet, so I cannot change that. On top of that, you'll hear a lot of people say that the black face paint is okay because it doesn't represent skin color. Instead, it's just soot from the chimney. Yeah, but historically, so. neither yeah. of those defenses is actually true. Zwarte Piet was originally written as a black slave character, and the blackface tradition was invented fairly recently. Though St. Nicholas folklore had been celebrated since the Middle Ages, there was no slave character involved until 1850, when this guy, a Dutch school teacher named Jan Schenkman, Who? wrote a children's book called St. Nicholas and Hitchin was invented fairly recently. Though St. Nicholas folklore had been celebrated since the Middle Ages, there was no slave character involved until 1850, when this guy, a Dutch school teacher named Jan Schenkman, wrote a children's book. Is it Dion Schenkman? I mean, we can't see it because of... Did he say Dion? It sounded like he said... That's why he said Juan. Gian. 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 Oh, interesting spelling. That would look like Jan to me. That would be Slipper but, Jan, but yeah. it can it fly for Gian, Gian if you like it. Okay. Gian I, ain't yeah. making, up, making a ruckus. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's blame Dion. Not Dion. Chill, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. It, it was Gian fault. <laughs> I thought I was... He a, made it into this. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Friends book called St. Nicholas and His Servant. The story describes how St. Nicholas visits a Dutch town, rewarding the good kids and punishing the bad kids. But just looking at the original illustrations for the book, you can tell that Black Pete isn't just a white Dutchman covered in soot. He's portrayed as a Moor from Spain, carrying St. Nicholas's heavy loads, wrapping up all the presents, and punishing naughty kids by hitting them with a switch or kidnapping them in a knapsack to take them back to Spain. He's not exactly a pleasant character in this original version of the story. Did, uh, I, wasn't uh, that the same uh, people that was coming down and passing candy out? Yeah. And we were like, that looks a little spooky. Yeah. That would be that'd a little, be that would be a little spooky. He, he yeah. gonna take me back to be a slave? But uh, hold up. If but that's not the mindset. That, that wasn't the mindset, though. They just see him as a bad person. Right. Who gonna get you? Because, you know, we'd be like, we got cold in our socks, so we ain't getting anything. Right. But you guys got a black pee. To take us back to, to Spain. To take us back to Spain. But he was a moor, so he got in. See, now I'm trying to go how he got the moor. Yeah, we got to flip through some pages. <laughs> Yeah. What I remember vividly is the the the, the sentiment of being scared. What if suddenly a Sarita Pete comes out of the chimney when I'm there alone? <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> and the terror of, of uh, young children who don't feel safe is quite a, a powerful uh, emotion that, that really stays with you. Mm. If you habituate children to this uh, response to these strange characters, with black faces, that's their model of black people. Mm, yeah, when Shankman wrote his children's book, it. slavery... I didn't want to say it. And she said it. I was thinking I mean, it, though. And in a way, 
it seemed like why y'all scared of us uh-huh yeah because that's that's what that would make me feel as a child you know just trying to put myself in the mind of a child anytime i see a yeah. black person i would be scared we know that children are the most influenced yet they're the most genetic highest thought imagine you know what i'm saying they they kill it they, their imagination yeah. is crazy you won't yeah. see an old person sitting up there not old but older individual talking to an imaginary friend or trying to be doing all children are like at the most they're geniuses right mm -hmm. so i feel like whenever a child is deemed upon an image of a certain way of living anything they can easily be influenced by it. yeah 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 i would be scared like now that is coming up to this the, this book it don't seem happy. This don't seem like Christmas anymore. Nah, Christmas for us is about love, and y'all know the story. But yeah. to grow up about, to grow up around a, a image of a person who is a black person, and when you get older, that becomes a reality. Oh, it's like, it's like what what nature, what kind of nature clicks on? You know, yeah. when you see a real black person approach you. Right. Especially if it's a homogenous society. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, it would, it, it would spook me. And I'm just looking at the pages of this book. Do you all have this version of the book or is it an updated version of the book with different things? Mm. Because mm. I'm not liking this image I'm seeing. Yeah. This, I think this looked like something that was in my history I, book. I would, I, I would, I would, I would know for, I, I would know that the older people know. Right. I would, I would have to say y'all know. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, okay, so the man changed it when he wrote the book, but a lot of the people in the comment section was saying that it was soot. Soot. I say smoke. Smoke from the chimney. Um, so it seems like some people are not even acknowledging the book. They just going with the, the folklore tradition, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But in 2023, modern times and so how do you how, like how you sit your children down and explain the story to them this 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 is something that i wouldn't partake in because for christmas for us we got the image of a white guy coming down the chimney and he's good yeah but you know, you know what i'm saying yes but in new orleans we created a tradition for you know my neighborhood where it was a man and he was doing it from like the 70s until like recent years when he passed away a black santa claus like that was something and i know in the u.s we make it a, a lot about race but it wasn't a bad thing for us it was just us wanting representation yeah, by our yeah. children so um and that was a holiday tradition everybody in new orleans had a picture with black santa claus you know yeah, 100%. so um yeah this you know how you know some people don't participate in halloween we didn't really our children barely know what it is they just yeah. know it's time candy. to get candy and go <laughs> get a cool outfit so i can be this guy i see every day on tv yeah so yeah. this is just one of those things as a parent we just wouldn't participate in it for our children if we didn't like it yeah basically was still alive and well in the Dutch colonies. It wasn't abolished for another 13. We talk too much. Strange characters <laughs> <We do. laughs> with black faces. That's their model of black people. When Shankman wrote his children's book, slavery was still alive and well in the Dutch colonies. It wasn't abolished for another 13 years in 1863. And even then, slaves had to work for another 10 years as reparations to the slaveholders. The government treated abolition as a financial inconvenience. Beyond Dutch history, blackface originated for the purpose of mocking and dehumanizing black people. In minstrel shows in the mid to late 1800s, white actors would use black grease paint on their faces to depict black people on stage. You could watch minstrel shows like this as recently is 1978 on BBC. Nah, I couldn't watch cartoons back in the day like this, bro. I couldn't. <laughs> that wouldn't yet. fly. <laughs> I, would, I know back I, I just... It looks scary. It does. It doesn't... I, I wouldn't know what to think. Like, I wouldn't know what to... I'm just being honest. I wouldn't know what to think if I seen this on TV. I yeah. first... My first instant is a circus. Yeah. That's my first thing. I'm waiting for an elephant to come out. Mm, it looked a like a clown to me. Yeah. Yeah. Taking place in societies that systematically mistreated black people, these portrayals served as a tool of oppression. Though Black Pete is the most beloved blackface character in European culture, he's not the only one. 
If you look at Belgian comic strips like Tintin, French ones like Asterix and Obelix, or Dutch ones like Georges and Shimmy, you can see versions of blackface caricatures everywhere. Black Pete, no matter how innocent the Dutch might think him to be, normalizes these portrayals. Of course it is political. You don't invent a tradition like this in innocence. It's really common to hear stories about black people being called Zwart Piet by children. It also serves as a basis for racialized bullying in schools. Black children are hurt and parents are keeping their children home from school rather than send them to be to grow up with this stereotype that makes them feel that they're inferior to the white kid. And it's common to hear people saying that black- I never thought about that. The schools. When the little babies go to school yeah. and certain holidays come around, aren't they like in a lineup, like they're in a lineup to be bullied? Basically. No, oh, you're a black Pete. Yeah. Oh, no, run away from him. Don't sit by me. It's traumatizing. <laughs> what, you going to pull out your backpack or whip? What, you going to take me You going to take me somewhere? Oh, no, they're going to kidnap me. Like, yeah. what, is, what is this? What is this? Oh. People crazy. in the Netherlands are totally okay with it, that their black neighbor or black friend actually likes it. Here's Prime Minister Ruta again making that argument. Uh, I can only say that my friends in uh, the Dutch Antilles, uh, they are very happy when they have Sinterklaas because they don't have to paint their faces. And when I'm playing for Black, Black Pete, I'm for days trying to get off uh, uh, the stuff on my face. That was the Prime Minister saying that a blackface tradition is really more annoying for him because when he puts on blackface, it's hard to get the paint off. And these people were angry about Black Pete, who is Santa's traditional sidekick there. 60 people were arrested for demonstrating away from locations that were set aside for protest, 30 more for disturbing public order. Public opposition to Black Pete has been building since the 1970s. When Suriname won its independence in 1975, almost a third of the population moved to the Netherlands in order to keep their Dutch citizenship. A lot of those people were of African ancestry, and demographic changes brought a change in the way people talked about Black Pete. Uh -oh. Maar Gerda, het is toch hartstikke leuk om zwart te zijn? Ja, dan, dan mag je met een zak lopen en peper. Yo, hey, Big Bird! <laughs> Look at Big Bird on your oh, TV! Oh, this is Sesame Street. This is blue? Sesame Street. Why hair blue? Big Bird blue, y'all. We got the yellow one. We got it. something must have happened in that in that episode. Man, you know because it says Sesame Street. Where you see that at? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. We ain't learned Dutch Bro. yet on the channel, huh? Man, once German. Oh, we uh, learned Afrikaans. We ain't learned Dutch. Okay, yo, it's like these birds so. be flying from different area codes for real, boy. <laughs> different area codes. Golly, boy, the big bird out there. Oh, nee, you know, it is helemaal niet leuk. Ik heet Gerda, ook als het Sinterklaasfeest is. Kijk, we begrijpen best wel dat Sinterklaas al zo lang komt en dat het best wel een vrolijk feest is. Maar voor heel veel zwarte mensen, grote mensen en kinderen is het helemaal geen feest. Nee, nee. We kunnen bijna niet vrolijk zijn. Still, that didn't stop the show from feeding. So, to me, what I was just saying, because the lady did say that this was a political move, is, is nothing nice about mm -hmm. it. They was trying to debunk the idea of that you could tell this show is targeted to children yeah, because what street. because black people was targeted to children so we're trying to make the children see that what the black people are going through because of this imagery mm. that's being displayed as up and down the streets like the black people are going through it they're not happy about it they yeah big bird and that lady was working hard yeah yeah, yeah. It's, what's, what's the bird name is big it, bird that's big bird it's now? big bird <laughs> i hope so it's probably yeah, something different it's big bird it's big bird okay yeah Black Pete in every yearly St. Nicholas episode after that. <laughs> Protest grew steadily, getting international attention in 2011 when two protesters from an awareness campaign called Zwart Pete is Racism were violently arrested in the city of Dordrecht. <laughs> The Dutch National Ombudsman later ruled that the arrest was unlawful, disproportionately violent, and in violation of their human rights. If you have eyes, and you have a little heart, you will know that this is wrong. That's Jerry Afriye. He was one of the two protesters arrested. What we are fighting is institutional racism, approved by the government, approved by the police, approved by uh, professionals, approved by uh, schools. 
everywhere that is is so much embedded in the whole society that uh, it makes it very difficult to bring changes to it. Mm. And everyone is using uh, their power to suppress us. And, and it's very difficult. Afriyi lost his job as a security guard after being arrested at a protest a few years ago, but he's kept showing up to demonstrate. Just a week after we spoke, he was violently assaulted by police again at a protest in the city of Rotterdam. In July 2014, Amsterdam's regional court ruled that Black Pete was, quote, a negative stereotype of black people, stating that the mayor had six weeks to remove Black Pete from city celebrations. But just a few months later, in November, the Netherlands' highest administrative court overturned that ruling, just in time for the holiday. Now, because uh, uh, this hoort to uh, our tot culture, that's in our values and norms, that's in our traditions that we have, and we willen we gewoon behouden. And die laten we niet afnemen door een door een klein groepje extremisten die uh, die die zwarte piet misbruiken uh, om om hun eigen frustratie. If a population, no matter how big, has a problem with it because it negatively affects them and their children, what tradition do is you it, have to value in a yeah, keep? Yeah, how is that a what I don't I don't know. I it's don't know. hurting yeah. people who are a part of your home, your country. Your neighbor. What value? It's to me it's just keeping a form of colonialism. Regardless of how pretty People try to make it seem it's. At first, I understood it. <clears throat> I understood the chimney part, but when it came to the book and everything thereafter, it's like and the politics and the politics. And the like, politics. At the end of the day, what? Who is the tradition aimed towards the most? Adults or children? It's aimed to children, right? Yeah. From. What we're gathering is aimed to children. Forget what you're trying to upkeep. You want to hurt the children? Yeah, I have a, uh, I have a bunch of stuff here. I got a <laughs> bunch of stuff here. It's out there. But in August 2015, a UN committee in Geneva called on the Dutch government to get rid of the aspects of Black Pete that promote black stereotypes. Yeah. Since then, parade organizers have made some efforts to gradually minimize Black Pete's racist characteristics. And that's all that My job, being the spokesperson of Santa Claus, is to make the party of Santa Claus for everybody. Yes. Not only the white people in the villages, but for everybody in the cities, in the bigger cities. One of the ways they've done that is that's by introducing better. a version of Black Pete that is clearly just a person covered in soot. Maybe that's better. It look a lot more like he came down a chimney. Yes, I can Bumped see his head that. a few times and he got down though. Yes. Yeah, it looked like a, a chimney soot, like you said. Yeah, that, that look better. That look way better. I could tell. He he, look his hair all messed up and everything. Mm-hmm. That's mm -hmm. better. They could have put a little more on the little white part though. Down there. Mm -hmm. And on the feather. Yeah, on the feathers and things. Yeah. Have them with some dirty clothes, you know. That's better. Yeah, so the guy had mentioned earlier in the video that um, it's not aimed just for white people. Mm -hmm. White people should not be the ones who get to have the enjoyment right, right. of Christmas. Christmas is supposed to be for everybody. It's right. all children that are supposed to get presents. All children are supposed to be happy to see Santa Claus. But it's... Yeah, it was spearheaded only one way. It was mm -hmm. one-sided. Mm -hmm. And we all seen that in the protests. Right. We all saw that when the when the news came out. We all saw that in politics. And how can you sit on the side and say that it's tradition? For yeah. who? Yeah. For everybody or just for you? Right, because once that book came out, baby, it changed. Mm. It looked like it, it changed. But this, that's, that's way better. Yeah, rules should abide by everyone. Everyone should be able to abide by the same rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without the earrings or the lipstick or an afro, they call it the chimney peat. RTL, one of the biggest TV networks in the region, stated in October that they wouldn't air anything except for chimney peat for the 2016 holidays. I I'm bearing by the objective. Okay, that's the objective is to have a smile on the okay, face of the children. Mm -hmm. To be happy. So if you want to 
change things take the time don't do it overnight so if you want to change this uh, an attitude like that it's not gonna go easy and in an unexpected announcement the team organizing the parade in amsterdam said chimney pete's would replace all black pete's in 2016. Yeah. but changing a tradition like this is slow and difficult every move away from black pete has been met with resistance a Jamaican researcher on the UN panel was met with a flurry of racist emails after their statement was released. A group in the Northern Netherlands that was planning on dressing as multicolored rainbow peats had to cancel their plans after getting death threats. And a Dutch contestant at the 2013 Eurovision music competition received racist messages and death threats after she spoke out against the custom. How can people be so angry at everyone else Ah, oh, it's just so silly to me. How can you be so mad at everybody? Even your own people. Because they don't want to abide by the old ways that can harm other people. Right. How That's you be all mad? It's about. How you mad at that? Like racist threats? Are people really that crazy because That's they can't upholding. paint their face black? Right. That's upholding the point. <laughs> Right. Basically, the point is 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 exposing itself. It's racist. Right there, so you're going to be racist to the people who to try the people. to stop it. Right. And how could you possibly make this such a big deal? Because they have been trained this way in childhood. Childhood. That's what the babies. People defend the tradition because it was important to their childhood, and they want to pass it on to their children. But understanding the impact this has on children could also be the key to changing public opinion. Just this year, the National Children's Ombudsman released a report arguing that the tradition violates children's rights regarding equal treatment and protection from discrimination. It has uh, tormented a lot of black people, even children who start to hate their own skin color, you know, who say, who come home to the parents crying and uh, saying stuff like, I don't want to be black, you know, it's, uh, it's dirty. You know, I'm call, uh, people are calling me so I pee that I'm dirty, my skin color. You know, it's very confusing and, dr uh, and dramatic. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and this is why um, history can be traumatic for generations to generations to generations. And people are impacted by it. Just like this. Yeah, I mean, but the baby show, it's like, if you want to see change, you start with the children. Right. And whichever way you spearhead it, that's the way it's going to go. Right. They're so, going to come up into the, they're going to be your next landowners. They're going to be your next doctors and they're going to treat people mm -hmm. how you taught them to treat them. All right. They are the next generation of the Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you got to just change with the times. And I agree with it up into that book. And even hearing you guys is, um, not hearing, but reading your reading. comments mm -hmm. and how, you know, y'all went into the details. But nobody bought this book up. Yeah. Nobody bought this book up. So I think that's where like the confusion started. But what I do like about the Netherlands is that we can have these conversations with them. Mm -hmm. And it's 95% of the time it's positive, you know? It's very understandable, it's cordial, there's no conflict. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have really nice conversations back and forth. Yeah, I mean, I think the only time we did was when, when I was like, I like my car. <laughs> oh, the crazy! Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all were crazy on yes. for that. One. I was like, come on, I gotta chill. Ain't no way. It's like, yeah. but we understand that you guys have it the way you guys have it. But yeah. when it comes to transportation, from A to B, I like my car. Yeah, we are gonna sit in that passenger <laughs> side and we are gonna uh, vroom vroom. Yeah, but when we come to the Netherlands, we are gonna try that b bike bike fit. You got a pedal bike? That's the... just, they got that little wagon. You can just go. We have to get in the wagon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are gonna. We're going to try it y'all way. But we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video. Subscribe. Turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to put the channel that way. As well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box, box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.